I also, ladies and gentlemen, over the break, I combined some things. I combined pleasure. Uh, actually took a little time. I, I, I cut the cord. I wanted to find out about this cord cutting business and how it works and how no, I know how it works technically. But I mean, I, I, I watched everything on TV on my iPad Pro, including the NFL football games. I was able to watch Sunday Ticket for the Sunday afternoon games. The NBC Sports app, I watched the Sunday night game, the Patriots and the Broncos. And by the way, is Tom Brady ticked off? Tom Brady, so he's, he's never been more ticked off over the rules and the refs and stuff as he was after that game Sunday. We'll get into that, too, as the program unfolds. I watched the latest Netflix series, Jessica Jones. It's from Marvel. It's, it's 13 episodes, one hour each. I watched, well, I did not watch them all. No, I'm not going to, I wasn't that slothful, but I watched a lot of it. Anyway, I watched everything I watched on my iPad Pro. Now, I must tell you one of the reasons why. It was the only way I could smoke my cigars and watch TV. Well, we were in a we were in a massive, uh, well, we were in a really, really nice hotel suite, but the only place I could smoke in it was in one of the bedrooms. And the TV set up in there where you had to be in bed. And I hate watching TV in bed. I can't do it. I can't read in bed. Beds for, well, I don't watch TV in bed. I just don't do it. So I had a chair in there. And, and so if I wanted to smoke cigar and watch TV, I had to watch it on the iPad Pro. But anyway, let me cut to the chase on this. I watched a bunch of television shows that through the process of reading, you know, my tech blogs and, and I'm focusing more and more on reading things written by millennials, TV critics, sports writers and this kind of stuff. I'm really trying to get a handle on that generation. And I have picked up on something that is, to me, upsetting and disturbing. And it's it's very, very simple. And I, once I point this out to you, I think if you pay attention as you go forward, you'll notice it too. It ties in with everything going on at college campuses today. Student protests and so forth. You know, they don't want to be upset. They want these safe areas. They don't want anybody disagreeing with all this childish little immature demands that they're making. What I have noticed is the more trauma in a TV show, the more personal trauma, the, the more suffering, the better. These young millennials, they love television shows and movies depicting stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, trauma, the worst, the better, suffering. And the purpose of television these days for them is to demonstrate how to cope with all of this. And the reason that I have concluded that they enjoy this is because that's what their lives are today. The, not, I'm not saying all millennials. I'm talking about these media-oriented critic, TV movie critics, uh, I don't know how how um, representative of the entire generation it is, but it's got to be pretty sizable. The more trauma, the more suffering, the greater they think the TV show or the movie is. Because that's what their lives are now. Trauma and suffering and how to cope. And a, a great TV show to them is one that demonstrates how to cope with all this trauma and suffering. Now you say, what trauma and what's... There isn't it. That's the whole point. It's made up. What have I always said? Well, it's made up, but it's real because they make it real. Psychologically, it's real. What have I always said about the baby boomers? The baby boomers, compared to our parents and grandparents, we had it easy. We had to invent our traumas in order to tell ourselves that our lives were tough. But we didn't face anything like our parents and grandparents faced, starting with, I don't know, I mean, how far back do you want to go? World War I, and the Great Depression, and World War II, then Korea, then the Soviet threat, which they considered deadly real. 
They had to grow up by age 18. They learned in their teenage years that life was about things much larger than themselves. And this generation can't get past the fact that life is totally about them and about nothing else. It's about them. It's about their suffering. It's about their comfort or lack of it. But the the overall point that I'm uh, or facet, I think, that I'm observing here is that to a lot of these young people, life is just misery. It's just total misery. And there isn't any escape from it. The only thing to do is to cope. And so a television series, a television show, or a movie that demos this gets great reviews. I I have read some of the most... Well, I mentioned Jessica Jones on Marvel. I watched it. I watched enough of it to know that, (laughs) look, I don't want to be insulting here. I mean, the actors are good in this kind of, but it just, let me put it this way. The reviewers that I read think it's the greatest television there's ever been. Without doubt, I read, how about a 10,000 word review? And it's all analyzing the suffering and the trauma of the main characters and how they deal with it and the lessons the viewer can take from it. When I watched it, I just got bored. I said, can we move this along? It's Marvel. It's superhero stuff. That's another thing. Superhero comic book is real life. And the stuff that happens in superheroville and comic bookville, real trauma and suffering and so forth and then uh anybody here watch the walking dead let me just run a little, did you watch it sunday night now, sunday night was the mid-season finale right now do not i want to know the honest to god truth do not factor anything i've said into what you're did, was it good or not would you like it okay super average mediocre what was it what? I can't. Okay, no help there. Um, bottom line is every mainstream reviewer that I have read, and I'm talking about somebody that's over 40, maybe 45 plus, thinks it's mediocre, it's exemplary of the, of the whole series losing its pizzazz. Yeah, this is zombies, zombies, The Walking Dead. Snurdly, before you get snarky in there, it has been the highest rated cable show ever for a period of time. But the point is, just stick with the zombies, right? The walking, but the, the, the mainstream viewer, the reviewers, like you'd read in the New York Post, New York Times, this think it's sad that the show's lost it. It's just mediocre. And the millennials think this episode was the best episode of the series with life lessons like you can't believe throughout it. Now you might, what what does all this matter? Well, because we're talking about the future of the country here, folks, in large part. That's why I said, I don't know how representative what I'm reading is of the whole generation. Well, this some of them are. Some of them come from the you know, in 2008. We're the ones the world's been waiting for to change the world. I think that's part and parcel of their misery. I think they bought utopia. I think they bought full on, full on utopia as presented by Obama. And now do we not have utopia? We've got mess upon mess upon mess. We've got we've got a bleak future economically, and I think it all rolls into creating this fatalistic attitude that they got. So, but anyway. It's just, it's a, it's a cultural observation, and I'm just at the beginnings here, so I'm not presenting to you any conclusions. I'm just sharing with you how my thought process on all of this is working. In, in other things, have you seen the uh, you see that lead story on Drudge up here? DiCaprio raped by bear in Fox movie. That is the lead story at Drudge. Apparently, there. Oh, by let me let me go back to this millennial trauma. How about Quentin Tarantino's movie? Eight is whatever it is. It's the bloodiest, the most profane, the goriest. It's three hours and intermission, and it is nothing but abject, full-on, total misery, murder, death, black, dark, 
death. It's just hor- and it and I guarantee you, by the time I get around to reading millennial reviews of this thing, they're going to think it's the best work of art the movies has ever produced. If I'm right. But anyway, back to this DiCaprio story. Um, DiCaprio raped by Bear in Fox. Hey, would you star in a movie in which you know going in because it's scripted you're going to get raped by, say, Yogi Bear in Jellystone Park? Would you? So here we have the Wolf of Wall Street meets Yogi Bear. But I was thinking when I saw this headline, I was thinking, what kind of reactions would there be when we have there's rape all over college campus, we're told. And when rape is all over college campus, you, the usual suspects start chiming in about how rotten American culture is, and the Republicans are to blame, and conservatives and their strict, judgmental lifestyle is causing all this stuff. So... I had a little fun here putting together various responses from people who have responded to the stories of uh, campus rape and so forth. To this story of Leonardo DiCaprio being raped by a bear in a movie. Whoopi Goldberg. I know it wasn't rape-rape. It was something else. But I I don't believe it was rape-rape. John Kerry. Well... There was a sort of particularized focus, perhaps even a legitimacy in terms, not, well, not a legitimacy, but a, a rationale that you can attach yourself to somehow and say, okay, they're really angry because that, that's what he said about Charlie Hebdo. That's what he said about Muslims, militant Islamists blowing up Charlie Hebdo. Well, they had a rationale for it. Well, maybe the bear had a rationale for it, if we're being consistent. Hillary Clinton, when told of the story, said, what difference does it make? At this point, oh, did you hear about Hillary? She now claims her concussion was so bad she called the NFL. I made a joke about that, and it's come true. Details coming up. Obama blamed climate change for the rape of DiCaprio by the bear and the Fox movie, and we will be back. 